I'm Russ Kickle, and on today's episode of American Reef, how to grow colorful, hardy corals as fast as humanly possible. So if you're new to the hobby, one of the things that will jump out at you really quick is it seems like it takes forever to grow corals um, and to grow them colorfully, right? Like selecting all these cool kind of color combinations. And so that's the premise of the video series that you're about to see. Um, ultimately, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to the pros to figure out how they do it, right? How they grow these corals and make a living at it, right? Now, my definition of a pro is probably a little bit different, meaning not only do I want to talk to somebody who is, is doing this for a living, right? Somebody who does it well for a living. But I also want to basically talk to somebody who is considered n number one or number two in their field, right? And in this particular case, that is Top Shelf Aquatics, right? Uh, these guys, they are the premier aquaculturists and have the premier aquaculture facility, like literally on the planet, right? Um, and if they aren't number one, then they are a real close number two, right? So again, really knowledgeable guys that have a lot of tips and tricks that they can share with us. And luckily for us, they just opened up another facility. And again, from their end of it, they're doing that good, right? And they are selling thousands of corals a month so they needed to actually have a bigger facility to basically keep up with demand. And so we are luckily and fortunate enough to actually spend some time with them to talk about not only what they are doing, but again, why they're doing it and how they are doing it, right? So we can pick their brain there to figure out how we can bring that back to our aquariums. Again, good stuff for not only the new hobbyist, but the experienced hobbyist as well. Um, and one of the things that you'll kind of see throughout this whole video series will be nutrients, right? Whether it's nutrients in or nutrients out, nutrients tend to be a very important part of growing colorful coral, colorful fish, etc. Um, and to that point, Premium Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply just released, I'll say probably three or four videos just on, again, feeding and nutrient control in themselves. And when you look at it, uh, they do a deeper dive. So again, the Premium Aquatics one, if you're new to feeding, for example, uh, Luke did a real nice job on there of kind of defining, again, what he's feeding, how he's feeding, why he's feeding, and, it, and he kind of talks about that delicate balance, right? Because it truly is a scale um, um, where you, too much in is a bad thing. Obviously, right? And then Bulk Reef Supply, they did the exact same thing. They actually have uh, one of the videos on a DIY kind of refood. So again, uh, it's it just awesome content worth checking out. Again, that's Premium Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply, both their YouTube channels. Um, and I believe we are now in the beginning of October, so you'll look at the videos from September 2019 kind of thing. Um, and again, I think it'll, it'll provide you a, a lot of good information to run with. And with that being said, let's talk to the guys over at Top Shelf Aquatics to get some tips and tricks and see how they grow colorful hardy corals quickly. <music> Some guys working on some things. So um, we are still not 100% finished yet. Uh, we are 70% there, but I want to give you guys a sneak peek uh, to what we got going on and all the work. Uh, so essentially, this has all been rebuilt out: um, ceilings, tile, the whole nine. This area that you see right now um, is essentially going to be the online. So there'll be desks over here. There'll be staff members, all the customer service guys. 
that's helping all you guys with your orders and lost packages. And it's showing. Uh, yeah. So this is what uh, where everything's at. All the magic's gonna happen. Processing pictures, orders, all that good fun stuff. Uh, this is gonna be the room. Uh, down there will be me and Kevin's office. Uh, and let me take you guys to the goodie part. So, hold it, hold it, hold it. What are these guys doing? Say hi. <laughs> what are they doing? Oh, do it again. I missed it. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's uh, let's take you guys over here. This has uh, been a year plus in the making uh, of work. So we uh, we're like I said, the systems are done. Seventy percent, eighty percent there. So let me let me take you guys. Uh, well, how much space do you have in general? Just for for water. Let's put it down. For right. water Just space. For water, right. um, I don't know, 3,000 square feet. So we got about 10,000 gallons when it's all said and done. Okay. Uh, and that's including some display tanks, uh, as well as the additional farm tanks that I'm gonna show you guys that, that will be coming in. Um, and then essentially those systems are broken down between uh, LPS, uh, SPS, high-end SPS, and then what we like to call just, you know, stuff that we can break down that's not a fully quarantine process uh, or aquaculture, Ricordias, for example, or, um, you know, rock enemies and stuff like that, that we would bring in, we would obviously make sure they're clean and, and healthy and then move them over. Cool. Um, which is essentially going to be this system. So let's, let, let's, let's go around uh, the corner. Let, let's, there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, come in. So it, it looks like a football field from my end. <laughs> it's awesome. So. What we have here, um, this is a our packing station uh, that we're gonna have. Um, really cool features that we did in here because we've learned uh, with water, we actually have these drilled with bulkheads and plumbing. There's gonna be some shelving over here, and we all obviously have our outlets here for um, you know all our under tier lighting and so forth. Above all this is gonna actually be a computer with uh, monitors. Uh, that shows all of our staff uh, how to pick your guys' orders. So they're gonna be able to see here, hey, order number this, here's all the corals, and this is where they're gonna actually be picking. So you mean like McDonald's when you go in pretty there? Much, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. And it's gonna be really cool, it's, it's gonna show. Um, it's gonna have a drive-thru? Uh, no, oh. maybe at the bank at the other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no drive-thru <laughs> corals here, so. Um, so this is uh, our first system. Um, like I said, this is the one that's not you know, 100% quarantine, but this is essentially still growing and farming out a lot of corals. Uh, this is the first system over here that we actually put corals into. Um, probably about two months ago, we were able to get the nutrients stable enough, and we really started loading it in. Okay. Um, we got a couple cool things on all of our systems that we have. We have custom sumps, uh, we have Apex systems, Ecotech, uh, Powerheads, and then um, we also have refrigerators uh, that are actually for live foods. Kevin will go a little bit yep. of detail about yep. that kind of cool things that we have. But uh, yeah, this is... This so is how many part. gallons is one of the tanks? Uh, Approximately. Or put it this way, how, how long are one of the tanks? So they're eight foot long. Kevin, how many gallons are those? They're like six, 600 a piece. Okay, so roughly so, 600, there we yeah, go. Um, give or take. We did do dry boxes in them, which is pretty cool. So we have all the Ecotech pumps inside the tanks. Um, Remember, really cool. new hobbyist, define what a dry box is. Yeah, so a dry box, because Ecotech pumps have the motor on the outside, Yeah. Um, therefore you can't really put an Ecotech <laughs> pump in the tank, right? So what we did is we have in the overflow boxes, dry boxes for the motor to actually sit inside. Okay. Um, and like I said, we'll go through a little bit more of that cool fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, Kevin will dive into that. But uh, yeah, if you want to follow me, let me sure. kind of walk you through a couple different things that we have going on here. Um, so another thing that is not finished yet, but we have custom racks that actually hold the coral so they don't move with flow, okay. uh, which is really cool. And all these, and all the racks are going to be skewed. Same thing I kind of showed you guys earlier uh, on the Lysol video with the skewing. Right. All this is going to be skewed, uh, skewed in, and, and shown. Um, so it's really super organized and, and so forth, which is really cool. Well, how many pieces do you hope to hold? Well, we our our goal is to keep between. 300 and 700 pieces on the site at all times. Okay. Uh, live sales are obviously going to be staged out more 2,000 plus sometimes sure. in the future. Um, and then that's what these first four tanks that I'm going to show you uh, are essentially going to hold is the online pieces. All the other tanks on each row is going to actually hold all the corals that are being farmed and propagated, cut, fragged, etc. Gotcha. So that's when you're going to grow and do all your work and everything yep. else, and then you're going to hold. 
Yep. Everything. Basically, everything's on the website there. That's right. So. Cool. Yeah. So this is um, we got some cool video we'll show you guys, but this is a little mushroom garden over here, some bounce mushrooms down in the sump uh, with some sand and lower light, lower flow areas. But like I said, this is all one system, uh, which is really really cool. So. Well, so, okay, a couple questions, right? The hobbyist me says, I see all of that kind of countertop, yeah. right? Yep. Again, and I see the drains and all that fun stuff, right? Um, I, I know that Claudia said hands in the kitchen, right? Is, it, is the idea to spread those hands out or what, why so much countertop? Yeah, so when we're packing orders and you have four or five people packing mm -hmm. orders, you know, it gets tight. So what we figured out is we have enough room to have essentially six people pulling and packing. Okay. Two people each section uh, comfortably, so you can't you don't have the corals mixed up when once we pull them. You have all the labels that are actually printing out uh, right there, so they can actually pop them on the corals, box them while boxes up there, and not be so packed. Because when we're doing these live sales in the other farm, it's 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 a tight, right. it's very tight. So this is going to allow us to be spread out, be more efficient. Uh, you know, sell more corals, sure. you know, without as many mistakes. Sure, sure, so, sure. Um, yeah, that's why we needed this space, and uh, it, it's, it's going to be a lot more efficient uh, once it's all set So, up. ultimately, quality, right? That, quality, that, yeah, that's your goal. Okay, quality so control, making okay. sure that everything is perfect. You know, that's, right. that's what we want to do. We want to make sure from when a coral is pulled, packed, shipped to the customer, has much less stress. So we're not sitting in bags, sitting in there for you know, 45 minutes or an hour. Right. We want to be able to pull this coral, pack it, getting on UPS's truck or FedEx truck, head to that customer as soon as possible without much stress. So essentially, this is going to make it much easier for us. And now, are you going to have anything underneath? Uh, yeah, so just storage, uh, okay, frag yep. plugs. So we do have a frag room that we uh, are not finished with, but this is essentially the same kind of countertop but just a bunch of saws and right. frag plugs and glue and all that fun right. stuff, you know, safety goggles and, sure. and, and so forth, just for fragging. Because uh, essentially we've got to keep cutting coral. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and for all you got guys to take grow. home and put it in your reef. So. <laughs> Good deal. So, okay, so now on the left side, as far as, we'll just say, some of the uh, um, the technology that you're going to have around. You said you're going to have monitors up top which they're going to get yeah, the instructions so we, uh, from. So yeah, we, we are working currently on the back end of our system mm -hmm. um, that the packing slip that we, we ship with our orders, when you get the corals, you're going to have a picture of the coral obviously, but for our packers here, instead of them having to pull that piece of paper, there's going to be a couple different uh, TV screens. And that TV screen is going to have a picture of the corals that they're packing yep. as well as the skew. So they don't have to touch paper. They literally just gonna be able to look here. Okay, I got this coral. I got right. this coral. I got this coral. Right. Once that order is complete, we're got uh, wire or water uh, proof keyboards and mouses, which is really cool. Uh, where they're gonna be able to complete the order. They'll print out tags, shipping label. They'll box it and send it off. Nice. So, so all the hand work. So all the hand work. Yeah, it's been a lot of process you know, from <laughs> learning and growing, but. Uh, you know, getting there and, and, and being able to build this out the correct way, we're, we're super excited about. Okay, and so the system to your left, yep. that's going to be one of the system that contains the frag. Yeah, right? so this is, uh, this particular, this whole entire row right here is one system. Uh, this particular tank is going to be all the skewed pieces. Um, so essentially, and, and we'll, I'll show you guys, there's four systems that are going to have all the pictured corals. We can fit roughly 2,500 frags to 3,000 frags comfortably in each system. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, you know, 12,000 frags. Essentially, we could take and skew in each one of these systems. Got total. it. Uh, that so, number just sounds like amazing, Yeah, right? it's, it's pretty cool. It, it, yeah. it, it, it gives us the ability to really spread out coral and all have it in one area, which is really cool. Sure. We do have four different systems currently up and going. We have a LPS system, which is a 100% LPS quarantine system. That means it's went through our vigorous quarantine process that you guys are somewhat yeah. aware of. Yeah, if yeah. not, watch one of the other videos that yeah. uh, he posted. Um, that's LPS, that's gonna be higher nutrients. You'll see some of the cool fish. We put lots of big pork fish in there. Uh, they're splashed around and a lot of waste. Uh, we have a uh, SPS, two SPS systems. Um, one's gonna be for more bread and butter, so all your like, you know, 
Montes or your bird's nest and you know your green acres that stuff that fly, flies off the shelf. Yeah, right? it, it, yeah, it's it's quarantined, um, but we can just shove it in that system, and then we have one entire system that's going to be only for our high end signature stuff. That essentially gives us the ability to put a lot of nice high end corals in there, have a large water volume, so our you know nutrients and our you know chemistry is staying consistent sure uh, so we're not having those fluctuations uh, with you know alkalinity calcium and so forth because of the large water volume as well as nutrients and we'll take a look at all that good stuff I was gonna say and for the new hobbyist why is that important yeah so consistency and it is is I believe one of the most important things you don't have to have a perfect tank chemistry wise or even nutrient rise if you're able to stay consistent and okay levels, right. the corals will adapt. Right. If you can have really good numbers, but you're up and down, let's say temperature, or up and down in nitrate, or up and down in alkalinity, but everything's consistent, the corals won't do that. They, they don't like that. They like consistency. So keeping everything really stable, consistent, is the most important part. And so when you say high-end corals, yeah. those are the corals that are less forgiving. Then, yeah, right? less forgiving. Um, I mean, not always, but right. it's more, it's corals that we have went years through quarantining, finding, growing, um, and then we're able to test these corals in different lighting, sure. uh, under different lighting. We have, you know, our main lighting that we use in here is Ecotech, and, and I won't get too much crazy, but we have T5, Metal Highlight, Kessel, we try it all. So we take one coral, if it's a signature TSA piece, and we'll move it in different lighting to make sure that coral is able to adapt. Or even move it into the LPS system with higher nutrients. Oh wow, this coral stays the same color or does the same thing. And this, that's what makes a TSA signature piece, right? With all that research uh, and, and R&D involved in those pieces to make sure they can adapt in pretty much any type of reef aquarium. So you're saying <laughs> that you'll take a coral and you'll have it under, say, radions, yep. right? But then you'll also put it maybe under castles yep. as well? Or T5, or metal halide. Okay. And do you keep it there? or? or yeah, so we'll, what we'll do, let's still, say if we had a colony, yep. we would take four or five different frags that's grown really well, and we'll move it to all these different lighting scenarios uh -huh. and see if it changes. Most of the time, they don't change. For sure. Um, because, mm -hmm. you know, good lighting is good lighting. In my right. opinion, I do like radions a lot, you know. Sure. Tech, and I obviously, you know, as you guys can tell. Um, but we'd like to see, hey, you know what? We might get better growth under this lighting or right. better color under this lighting. We like to know that uh, so we can really surprise that in, see what kind of par levels that coral's, uh, you know, doing better in. Uh, as well as nutrients. Sure. That's why we have an LPS system that's gonna have a little bit higher nutrients. We can put higher nutrient corals in there. Now, our ultimate goal though, is for our signature pieces to survive in all of the different types of aquariums. So you can have a full mixed reef. Because one of the major challenges today is having a full mixed reef. Right, right. You know, how do I keep really nice zoos and acros at the same time? It's a challenge. It's a challenge for us as professionals. Uh, but on an aquaculture perspective, that's why we've divided our tanks up so we can specify and specifically target higher nutrients or lower lighting, or lower nutrients and higher lighting in different systems. Cool. different types of lighting, okay? Um, in our current farm, we run all kinds of different lighting, but we aren't able to scale it as much as we want to. So in this specific system, as you guys can tell, um, 
we were on a really big refugium uh, over there. Uh, that's got some of the Kessel refugium. The AI refugium lights are actually on one of the other tanks. They're doing great too. Mm -hmm. We're able to test the different types of lighting, you know, for example, with the Chato. Um, we have huge sump over here, and this essentially is, uh, which I'll show you with the, the mushroom, pretty much just more water volume. Right. You can put different types of corals on there. Let's say Monta Forge are doing really well, and adjust all the Ecotech radion lighting underneath there. Um, so like I said, this is our main SPS, high-end SPS. Right now it just has live rock in there, but essentially all that live rock will be placed below the racks, and then we're gonna have all those racks that are able to hold each right. individual frag inside of these systems. Um, this particular system, we have Ecotech Radeon Gen 4 XR30 Pros. We also have some metal highlights in here to try on different systems. Um, what's interesting enough, we have seen 90% of our acros do just as good as under Radeons as metal highlights. People may ask, well, why do you even try the metal highlights? Because there's that 10% of some corals that just like metal highlights better. Uh, but for the most part, I would say Ecotech's doing a really great job. Their, their radios are phenomenal. Right. Um, we have a fixture that we made right here, which is going to be a, a T5 LED fixture, and then again, some more radios. So this is gonna be the SPS high-end uh, system. On the back system is gonna be the LPS. It's a totally different system. Or not LPS, SPS uh, that's more bread and butter. Uh, again, this is one of the systems that is going to be all racks, and this is going to be only um, the online corals in this specific, specific system. These four systems right here, you have the high-end acros, the bread and butter acros, full quarantine process and aquaculture. You have the LPS system that's full uh, aquaculture quarantine process as well. And then we have our um, pretty much our corals that we dip and we, we cut up and, and grow in this system. But these four tanks are the ones that are going to be the online corals only. So all the skewing and so forth could be on these four systems. So essentially we can just pull from these areas, go right here, and people can pack. So it makes the process a lot quicker as well. And so when you say go right here, this gives a better perspective yeah. of that truck. I mean, that's a lot of work in the area, right? Yeah, so we have this little area right here, and then all the coral colonies are going to be in the same rows, or in the same systems, just farther down. So it would be those two tanks, those last two, those and those. I hear constantly we're cutting, right? And then we're growing, right? But you know, you'll hear like phrases like chop shop. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? In other words, to me, I know the difference, but you're a new hobbyist, right? So first of all, I would say we, a chop shop is grabbing wild corals out of the ocean. Yep. Uh, cutting them peeling them, and then selling them. Essentially, you don't have second, third, and fourth generations of the same coral. Right. Uh, we do that as well, right? Our primary goal, and what we focus mostly on, is full aquaculture. That means, yes, that piece did come from the wild, but what we have done is we have sat on that piece, we have quarantined that piece, we have multiple colonies in different systems and then we have now fragged off those and refragged them multiple multiple times years um, and that's what those three systems are for right this one systems for the report is that we're not really growing that we can't get you know from the wild uh, but there's a lot of miraculture stuff that does come in that, that's not wild or off the reef sure um, and 90 percent of the corals that we do are aquacultured and that's what we really focus on Again, I think new hobbyists will find that very informative, right? Yeah, yeah. I, we, we, that's our goal. Right. We, we wouldn't want to be 100% self-sustained, you know, where we're not collecting off the reef. Sure. Um, but there's certain corals, unfortunately, that we can't aquaculture. Scolies. Right. For one. Elegance corals. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot. Meat right. corals. Right. Cinerinas. These are corals that would take years to propagate right uh and in fact you can't really cut them without dying so sure we sure. do have to have a system where we can dip and we can bring us up to offer to our customers but our sps and our zoos and mushrooms and stuff are, right. are awful culture 
Well, and it was interesting too, because remember um, that one video Kevin did, so he was saying what, like, what separates you guys from a lot of the other kind of competitors out there, it's just that whole process that it takes from when you get, right? Yeah, yeah it, it, is, it is a lot of work. Um, we have full staff members, that's all their job is to do is keep track of these tanks, make sure the corals are healthy, dip the corals, replace them, identify any type of issues, and make sure that doesn't get spread into the systems, and at the end of the day, make sure it doesn't go home with you. Sure. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, right? Because Kevin was talking about like that quarantine process, yep. and he was telling me stories about snails getting scrubbed off and blood. Tell me about it. Yeah. So what we have actually done, um, because this is, we started from scratch and we learned our lesson. <laughs> uh, every invert in these systems were inspected, mm -hmm. scrubbed, and cleaned. So there's no Asterina starters or Aptasia or any other pets that could come in just for the inverts. Right. Every fish in this system has also been completely quarantined, which we can show you guys a little bit later of our quarantine tanks that are set up right now as temporary until our other section of tanks that are coming in uh, are done. Um, everything, the live rock that came in was all bleached, cycled, Rebleached and cleaned before they even went to these systems. Everything has been through rigorous quarantine process to make sure that we don't have to have those issues in a couple months or in years. Even. Right, right. So, so for you as much as again the other guys, so to speak, right? Yeah, it, Everybody it's a lot wins. Of work, you know? Well, you were talking about even like the fish. Yeah. Right. Yep. So. Yeah, you guys can actually follow me around here. So this is temporary. Um, we have two systems here where we actually are running uh, quarantine fish for our systems over here. Um, just getting them up and running. One of them we run with copper, so we run this one first with copper. Once it goes through its whole uh, quarantine phase with that, then it runs for the other system that's running uh, Prasic Quantil, Prasic Pro, which is a medication for flukes. It's a dewormer uh, that makes sure there's no other kind of things that are on the fish. Um, and this gives us, this is a this is a pretty long week. This is an eight week period, or eight week process. Uh, so it's four weeks here and four weeks there. Um, so any signs or anything, if it makes it through this system and goes in this, well that whole batch has to go back through. Sure. So this is something that we've done for our farm so we don't have to worry about anything. Uh, and this is just, you know, some of the stuff that we do to really make a difference in our systems and ultimately make a difference in the product that we're offering our customers. You know, it seems like a lot of work to yeah, me. It's, it's work. Yeah, it's a ton of work. <laughs> okay, so how many hours do you put in a week, roughly? Uh, 55, 60 hours. Okay. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> it's been more in the past, but you know, I got a wife and family now, so I'm trying to work a little bit less. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, does she think that that's a little bit too much? Uh, of or course, yes. what women do, you know, when our yeah. husbands are working 55 hours. Yeah, that's but, right, uh, right. what we love, and, and that's the difference here, you know? Right. We're so passionate here, it's almost not even work to me working that much, right. you know. We I love this. This is fun to us. Sure. You know? And even been doing this for eleven years, you know, I started when I was twenty one years old. Right, right. Uh full time eleven years, not even a hobby, just as a job. Right. It it's fun still, you know, to come in here and see what we've come up with as a team, Kevin, me and Alex, um, you know, talking with Claudia and Dave and just getting the whole team's ideas and really processing into one uh, under one roof has been a blessing. Right. Uh, and we're right. excited. We're excited about the future and, and what we have to uh, to give to customers like you guys. So it's been a filling year, I guess you could say, <laughs> you know, since we. We've merged in, in our, right. as one company. So. Right, right. Well, you know what? Let's talk about that just for a little bit. Maybe yeah. people don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I used to own Reefers Direct. Um, Reefers Direct, I started it, man, I started in 2010, I believe, uh, with 4000 bucks. So I, uh, I worked four years for not one dollar. Uh -huh. um, and because I loved it. I loved this right. hobby. It was a little store. and. I had the opportunity to really team up with Top Shelf and um, you know when me, Alex and Kevin kind of all sat down and our visions were all together as one, uh, it, it just merged really well. Right. Um, I was able to bring my staff over and we were able to have this location, we purchased this warehouse and kind of make it all out of one roof. Right. Um, 
and, and it's been it's been a great great year and we're excited about the future so it sounds like you're the troublemaker who basically got this warehouse going because yeah, it, 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 everything uh, went a lot quicker once right. this all happened once we decided to to, to merge as one company um we really sat down at the drawing board. Okay, this is what we want to do. This is what we're going right. to do. Um, you know, at that time, Top Shelf wasn't as active online. Right. Um, you know, they definitely had some people, and, and we were they were selling corals. Um, Reefers Direct was more starting online. You know, and that's what I enjoy. Sure. Uh, so it gives us the ability as you know three different owners to really focus on the three different parts of the business. I get to focus online. That's what I like to do. Right. I like selling the corals. I like listing the corals. I like the reef to reef. I like the website. Kevin, he loves plumbing. Right. He loves uh, <laughs> yeah. all the little things and growing the coral and and uh, fragging it and farming. And I do too. But it gives us the ability to really conquer and divide. And, and then conquer. Alex loves retail. Right. Uh, so he's on the retail floor. He's helping with our maintenance customers and so forth. So it's really given us the ability to really just mesh together and create, sure. you know, a, a great company that we're all excited to be part of. Okay, so if I'm a guy who's buying stuff from you online and yep. I got an issue, yep. who do I call? How What's the process? What do we do? Yeah, so if there's any issues online, just go ahead and pick up the phone. You can call our uh, 407-677-7333, which is 677-REAP. Um, and or send us an email at sales at Top Shelf Aquatics. Dave, Claudia, or myself, or one of the other online team members will get right back to you and we'll fix it. You know, we definitely have shipping issues. You know, UPS and FedEx are not always 100%. <laughs> what are you uh, saying? <laughs> but we 100% will cover that coral. Right. No questions. So right. we ship out coral all the time. You know, we ship out hundreds of boxes a month. Um, and there's one or two, but that's not something to be worried about because we're here to help you and back it and make sure it gets fixed. So. And that sounds like a perfect way to end, end this video. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No